Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you had a really great day trading today. So today was Tuesday, September 17th, and it is the day before the FOMC interest rate cut decision. And we did continue the cautiously optimistic sentiment. And even though we did close mostly flat across the board, we had some amazing swings and we have a lot of great technicals to go over today. So SPY did open today with a gap up and we gapped right into this gap that we made just after we made all time highs in July and we did gap down right after making those all time highs that is right back here and we gapped down and then we had a huge drop and when we came back up in August we did chip into most of that gap but we left a little bit open right here and today that is exactly where we gapped into and then we pushed up got above all time highs got it all the way up to the top of the implied move. And today, if you did sell 567, 568 bear call spreads when we did get to the top of the implied move, those would have closed up 100% because right after we hit the top of the implied move, we pulled back and we did close out this gap right here. That is from the first trading day of September. We gapped down and then last week, we filled most of that gap and today we filled the rest of it on the way back down and then we took it to the 35 EMA and that is where we bounced on the day. So always good to know where your 35 EMA is. It did hold us up today. And SPX, we opened with a gap up and we took it right into that gap. That's the gap off of when we made all time highs in July. And then from there, we took it to the top of the implied move and all time highs and in SPX that was at the same level and we did actually make new all time highs by $1 so 56.69.67 was previous all time highs we did take it to 56.70.81 so I am going to zoom in just a little bit to show that right there you could see that little wick that got above previous all-time highs and then we got pulled back down we filled the second gap and that was from that gap down in september the first trading day of september where we gapped down and dropped and we filled that on the way back down we took it to the 35 ema and we did bounce right on the 35 ema so today if you did sell 56.70 5680 bear call spreads those would have closed up 100% for you today I sold 5675 5685 I did take it one strike further out and those did close up 100% for me SPY did close up 0.04% SPX closed up 0.03% so pretty flat for both of them VIX closed up 2.74% and in both SPY and SPX, we did trade completely within the implied move. And taking it over to QQQ, today we did open with a gap up and we gapped over 474. QQQ absolutely loves 474 and I'll zoom out in just a minute to show that. But we gapped over it and almost completely closed out the down gap from Monday and we did have just a little bit open here which we did end up closing on the way back down but with that gap up we took it to last friday's highs and you could see the bodies completely stayed underneath that level we did have a few runaway wicks here that did take it all the way to the top of the implied move at 478 so if you did sell bear call spreads at 478 479 when we did get up here you would have had to have those orders in before that move happened because we did not stay up there for long. So if you maybe put that order in before market opened and it filled at the top, that's really the only way you would have gotten that. So we did touch the top of the implied move and then we dropped back down to the 35 EMA and that 35 EMA did catch us. So we did close back underneath that 474 level. And in the second half of the video, I will zoom out and show where that level has been over the past few months. It's pretty interesting. And QQQ did close up 
0.05%, VXN closed up 0.8%, and we did stay completely within the implied move here. And then IWM, IWM had a wild day and we opened with a gap up and we took it about halfway up the implied move here and we took it right into this gap. This is the very beginning of September. Right after Labor Day, that first trading day, we gapped down and we did fill most of that gap with that first candle. We tried to pop back up, but then we left a bit open. Today, we did get right into that gap and at first got pushed down, but then we did pull back up and we took it to the top of the implied move and then another dollar higher. So today, if you did sell 221, 222 bear call spreads when we were up here, those would have closed 100% when we did pull back into the implied move. And we did close underneath that gap, even though we did fill it today. IWM did close up 0.83%. This was our biggest winner of the day. Everything else was pretty flat. RVX closed up 0.93% and we did trade almost completely within the implied move, but we did close within the implied move. We did pop out here at the earlier part of the day, but we did get pulled back in. And lastly, we have DIA. DIA did open making new all-time highs. So we did open up and push to make new all-time highs at 419.49 and then we pulled back down to the 35 EMA and just like in the S&P and the NASDAQ we did bounce right on that 35 EMA for the day. We also had that up gap from the start of the week. We did see support right here and then again right here that was with the 35 EMA. We did stay above that opening up gap from yesterday. So DIA did close down 0.03% and in after hours we are back up 0.03% so completely flat over here and we did stay completely within the implied move over here. So really fun day. Let me know in the comments how you played. I know I talk a lot about bear call spreads and bull put spreads. That's just the way I play it but I want to hear what you guys did and how it went. And then let's go check out tomorrow's levels. Alright guys, so before we head into tomorrow's trading ranges, if you find these videos useful, if they help you to choose better strikes and take better trades and you love how I break it down every night, then please make sure to give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I do post new videos. If you have any questions at all, just leave me a comment and I will get back to you. There is no such thing as a dumb comment and I had so much help when I was learning that you guys wouldn't even believe some of the questions I asked. And if you want to support my channel financially, don't forget about that thank you button. It is just underneath the video. And if you can't do that, if you haven't quite gotten profitable regularly yet, then another way to help my channel grow is to share it everywhere you post trading ideas. All right, so starting in SPY, tomorrow's implied move is between 556 and 570 and that is from options and the 30-day average volatility is actually less wide it is between 557 and 569 so the implied move for tomorrow is actually one dollar wider than the 30-day average volatility and then the implied move on thursday's contract is between 555 and 571 and tomorrow's trading range is not very complicated. We are just underneath all-time highs, so we don't have a bunch of stuff running through it like we did a few weeks ago. And to the upside, the first level to look for is actually all-time highs. That is at 566.58. We did make that today. And then just above that, the top of the implied move is 570. And then the top of the implied move on Thursday's contract is 571. 
And then to the downside, we do have the 35 EMA. And that 35 EMA has been holding us up and we've been trading pretty high above it ever since we saw CPI and PPI inflation data last week. So with CPI, we actually dropped. We saw resistance at that 50 day moving average. And then when we popped back up, we got back above the 35 EMA. And then we have been trading high above that. Today, we did touch down and we did see that as support but this level absolutely needs to be on your chart tomorrow. And then just underneath that, we have this up gap. This is from last week after PPI. We had that up gap going into Friday where we ended up pushing into this September gap. Today, we did close out the rest of that gap. So this up gap right here, bottom of that gap is at 558.89. So let's call it 559. That is our next level of support if we break the 35 EMA. And then just underneath that, the bottom of the implied move is at 556. And then just underneath, we have the 30 minute 200 moving average. And 555 is underneath that 30 minute 200 moving average. And that is the bottom of the implied move on Thursday's contract. So overall, not a terribly difficult trading range. But of course, we do have that rate decision tomorrow at 2 p.m. and Jay Powell speaking at 2.30. So expect volatility and just know where everything is so you could play off of it. I'm not expecting a drop all the way down to the 50 day moving average or the one hour, but that is underneath us. And if we just happen to break all of this, just know our next levels are down here. And then SPX. The implied move tomorrow is between 5570 and 5700 and that is from options and then the 30-day average volatility is less wide than that it is between 5580 and 5688 so I will round that up to 5690 Again, this range is not difficult, just waiting on direction from the FOMC rate decision and just knowing where everything is is very important. To the upside, new all-time highs that we did make today, 567081. The top of the implied move for tomorrow is at 5700. That is $30 above the all-time highs we just made. And the implied move for tomorrow is about 1.13%. And then the implied move on Thursday's contract takes the top to 57.15. And then to the downside, 35 EMA. We had a pretty clean catch on that today. We definitely did not bounce very hard on it, but we did stop at that level. Again, looking for direction at FOMC tomorrow. So if we do break this level, then just underneath, we have that up gap from last Thursday going into Friday. That is right after PPI and then before that CPI. So we had that up gap and then we pushed up into this bear gap. And the bottom of that gap is 55.95. If this level does not hold and we retest some of the CPI and PPI levels, then just underneath that we have 55.70 as the bottom of the implied move. 55.50 is the bottom of the implied move on Thursday's contract, and we do have that 30 minute 200 moving average with a very flat momentum just underneath both days implied move. Underneath that we do have the 50 day moving average, also flat momentum here and that one hour 200 moving average. So because the momentum is flat here, we could drop down to it and stay at this level, but we also could break it and look for the next upward moving average. That would be the one hour 200 moving average. And because this is what I trade, if we do find ourselves up tomorrow, then I would probably be looking at 57.05 and 57.15 spreads. I like a $10 wide spread, and I've been using the top of the next day's implied move as the strike that I buy, and then $10 underneath that, that is my sell strike. So 57.05 and 57.15, and then to the downside, if we do drop, I would be looking at 55.60, 
as the strike that I sell and 55.50 as the strike that I buy. And that would be on tomorrow's contract. And as much as I like to keep things mechanical on a day like tomorrow, that could change. I may decide not to take that trade if we have some crazy unexpected move, but there is a high probability that those are the strikes that I will be looking to for tomorrow. And then taking it over to QQQ. The implied move for tomorrow for FOMC over here is pretty wide. We have 1.58% and actually I'm just kidding because it was over here we actually have the implied move is a little bit less wide. So we're looking at 1.46% as the implied move for tomorrow and both the implied move and the 30 day average volatility are 466 and 481 when rounded out, 466 to 481 and on Thursday's contract, 464 to 483. And to the upside, we do have 474 right here. And I did say in the first part of the video that I would zoom out and take a look at 474. And this is the past three months right here. And right here we saw 474 as support. This was in late June. And then we saw it as support in July right here. And then once we bounced on it and then gapped underneath it, it became resistance. And we saw resistance here, got hit pretty hard. This right here is where we saw VIX to 65. And then when we rallied back up, we did see a bit of resistance around 474. And then we lost it, we dropped again down to the 35 EMA on the weekly time frame, And then we did come back up and here we are again at 474. If I did a volume overlay on this chart, 474 would probably be front and center. We've had so much action around 474 in the past three months. And as of right now, it is just directly above where we closed today. And this week, just this week, we gapped underneath it to start the week, bounced on the 35 EMA, gapped above it, dropped below it so 474 is right there front and center right across the middle of our trading range tomorrow and then above that we do have 476 we did see resistance there today that was also last friday's highs and where we closed the gap from september drop above that we have 478 that is our next level of resistance that goes back to august right here and then if we get above that, then the top of the implied move is at 481 and 483 on Thursday's contract. So if momentum is strong tomorrow and we get above this level and maybe see this as a support, then maybe 483 would be a strike to lean into on Thursday's contract. I am bearish here, so I personally am looking down. And the first level to the downside is the 35 EMA. That is directly where we closed, or directly underneath where I closed, I should say. And if we break this level, then the next level to look for is this downward facing 50 day moving average. We did see some support on that this Monday to start the week. So 50 day moving average definitely could hold us up if we drop. And 30 minute 200 moving average also is right at the bottom of the implied move. And then we have the upward facing one hour and four hour 200 moving averages. And just zooming out a little bit and looking at this, it just feels like we should be retesting the bottom here. Stupid Willy is also pointing us down lower. 466 is the bottom of the implied move and 464 is the bottom of the implied move on Thursday's contract. And I just want to clarify, I am bearish, but that does not mean that the market does have to go down. And I try not to let my bearish sentiment get in the way because it will mess up your trades if you get too wrapped up in an opinion. So the way I like to look at it is if we move up, then what is my plan? And usually my plan is to put on a bear call spread if we make the entire move up or close to it. And the same to the downside. If we drop all the way down here, then I'm looking at 466 
to 464, maybe that middle strike in between 465, but I try never to let my opinion get in the way. And you shouldn't either. So then taking it over to IWM, the implied move over here is really wide and much wider than the 30-day average volatility. So 30-day average volatility is right here between 215 and 223, and the implied move for tomorrow is 214 to 225. So tomorrow's implied move in IWM is 2.44%. That is a big move, and it is in alignment with RVX, which is at 26 right now. And then the implied move on Thursday's contract, 213 to 226. And again, right here, we don't have a very difficult trading range, but looking out to see where momentum takes us. And, and then from there, decide how to react. And let me just add something really quickly before. So right here, we had an up gap from today that I didn't put in. Let's just lock that down. All right, so to the upside, the first level to look for is gonna be where we made highs today. That is at 221.80. And then directly above that, what do we have? Let's zoom out. We have a resistance level that goes back to the end of August. And that is at 222 and a quarter. And then the top of the implied move is at 225. The 30-day average volatility would take us to about 222, closer to 223. That definitely could be a relevant level. Options are taking it wider, but if we're just looking at the average move lately, 223 might be a good strike to look to for tomorrow. If you're feeling bold and if you feel like this will hold as a resistance. And then above that, within tomorrow's trading range, we do have another resistance level. And that goes back to right here where we traded sideways for about two weeks and that average resistance level right here was about 225 and that is the upside and IWM has absolutely been on a tear lately so if FOMC is favorable tomorrow then we could see some big moves in IWM and even though when interest rates start to get cut that is not necessarily bullish the immediate reaction often is bullish before we start selling off so we could see an up move before seeing a down move and just because historically interest rate cuts have not been bullish does not mean that that's what has to happen but patterns do tend to repeat and in my opinion i do think that we will see some kind of deeper correction in the market here but again, trade the chart, not my opinion. And then to the downside, we do have the 35 EMA just underneath us. We have been trading very strongly above that level ever since inflation data. We saw CPI and PPI and then a massive gap up. So 35 EMA and then with this up gap from today, that could give us a little bit of support tomorrow. And if not, then underneath us, we have the 50-day moving average, the one-hour 200 moving average. The 30-minute is pointing down. That absolutely could draw us down. We also have downward momentum here on Stupid Willy. So if we do sell off tomorrow, then I would absolutely be looking to that 30-minute 200 moving average. In fact, it's right there at the bottom of the implied move at 214. Make sure you have that on your chart as well as the 50 day moving average. And then 213, bottom of the implied move on Thursday's contract. And then 211 is the bottom of this gap. This is the gap from just after PPI inflation data last week. And then lastly, we have DIA. And the implied move over here for tomorrow is between 410 and 424 that is from options the implied move on the week that we started off at the very beginning of the week was 407 to 422 and then to the upside the first level to look for is where we made new all-time highs today that is five sorry 419 49 and then if we get above that 422 is the top of the implied move on friday for the week and then 424 
on the day. And then just underneath us, we have the 35 EMA. And if we break that, the very next level to look for, 30 minute, 200 moving average. Just kidding, the very next level to look for is gonna be this up gap right here. This is the gap we started the week with. Bottom of that gap is at 415. So 35 EMA, 415. Then we have the 30 minute, 200 moving average. And then 410 is the bottom of the implied move for tomorrow. And that is everything I see in tomorrow's trading ranges. If you guys see anything else, let me know. Definitely let me know if I missed anything. And have fun tomorrow. Trade safe. Make sure you take profits when you're up. And I'll see you guys tomorrow night.